Right. So, um, how was uh, how was your weekend? Or I believe for some you some of you he, t today is a, a school day, right? And I believe in Saudi Arabia. No, actually, this weekend we have a long weekend. Thursday will be, sorry Tuesday will be the first day this week. Sorry, I couldn't hear you well, Akram. I said like you, usually we like start the week the week at Sunday, but this weekend it's long, so we are going to start at Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, good. Oh, you have like many many days off. But what is the uh, like what is the weekly uh, off day off? Like what is the weekend there? I believe yeah. it's Friday, right? Friday and Saturday, yeah. Friday and Saturday, good, good, yeah. All right, so welcome back to another unit. And today we're going to start with unit 7.2. So um, from the title, Switching Off, what do you think this unit is going to be about? Take time. <laughs> Take time for yourself or something. Yeah. From but the first picture. Just waiting from five exactly like you, but they didn't send the, the, the link. So I was just waiting like you. I'm sorry. All right. So um, let's look at the pictures there. And um, from the pictures, what, what do you think these people are doing? Um, the girl is meditating. Meditating and others. And those are chatting, maybe having fun together. So which of these like activities would you find most relaxing and why? The one on the left. <laughs> the one on the left. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, like for, for some people, this would be not relaxing. It's not yeah. that gonna yeah. be not relaxing. <laughs> control themselves to sit in silence and just meditate you know yeah but, but it helps to clarify your mind yes of course it does but for some other people they would just feel relaxed doing some social you know stuff yeah so yeah right today we have something interesting to study we have something called idioms what are idioms? Have you ever heard of this word? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you, like, it's, what, what is the meaning of the, the, like, what is the meaning of idioms? I think, like, a sentence, but it doesn't mean the literally meaning. Exactly, yes. Do you have a, like, an idiom in mind? Um, I have one. Okay. When you say you have a sweet tooth, I think like means you like to eat. Sorry, what is it? A sweet tooth, I think. Sweet like tooth. A, a sweet yeah. teeth, yes. We call it teeth, yeah, sorry. Teeth. Yes. It, it means like you like sweet things, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, for example, uh, it trains... Uh, cats and dogs, there will be definitely no cats and dogs coming out of, you know, falling down from the sky. So yeah, it means like to rain heavily. <laughs> I, I also like, there, there is also another one that I used to use it, it. For example, we say she goes banana and you know, that means she's she's getting crazy. Have you ever heard of those? No. <laughs> the first no. one maybe, but the second <laughs> one was weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When, when when someone goes banana, it means like yeah, he's it's definitely they're informal, but yeah, they, they use them in the spoken you know English. So here we have some idioms. And uh, we need to, like, you need to match them with the words or replace them with the words that are in italics in sentences one, two, six. 
So let's see the idioms first, and then I will give you some time to try to replace them with, with the other um, phrases from the, from the sentences. They are in the italics. So for example, here to take a rest, you can see it. All right, so um, let's see the, um, the idioms. For, for the first one is to take time from something. Next one is have a breather. And the next one is take my mind off. Then we have to switch off. And we have let your hair down. And eventually we have unwind. So do you know the meaning of these um, phrases here, like idioms like here? For me, yes, except on wind. Okay. And uh, let your hair let, down. Yes, let your hair down. This is my first time. All right. We you will you will we will get all of them. Just try to match them with the italics uh, phrases here in one to six, and then we will do them together. Okay. Okay. Have you finished? Girls, are you there? Yeah, just a second, teacher. Okay. All right, so let's do it together, everyone. First, we have here the uh, let's just I will highlight the italics. Uh, so here we have can take a rest, and then we have here go wild for a bit, and here, um, yeah, to have a month of work to finish her PhD. Okay. Then we have here for a while. And what else do we have? Yes, focusing on my work at the weekend. Um, right, and then we have, what is the italics here? I think relax. Relax, yes. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Um, okay, run around the field one more time, then you can take a rest. What is the idiom that we need here? Have a breather. Uh, yes, I, uh, I get that too. Sorry, what is it? Have a breather. Have a breather, that's correct. Thank you. Okay, next one, just go to the party and go wild for a bit. Uh, let your hair let down. Your hair That's correct. <laughs> How did you know it? You eliminated the other answers and then you got yes. it, right? <laughs> yes, yes. So you have your hair down. And this is one of the most interesting ones. 
yes, to have your hair down. It's like to go wild for a bit and to party like my neighbors. <sighs> okay, I'm not sure if you, can you see it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, the next one. She's going to have a month of work to finish her PhD dissertation. I think she's going to take time out from work to finish her. Yes, yeah. take time out of work. So we don't need to, until finish, okay? Not all of it here. Okay. To take, going to have, have a month of work. We would just try it um, instead to take time out from, take time out from. Okay, the next one is I went traveling in order to forget about the tragedy for a while. Take my mind off. Okay, to take my mind off. Yes, that, that means to uh, like, you know, just to forget about something for a while. So, take... so teacher, can I have a question? Yes, please. We're going to put to take my mind off and stayed for a while or, or forget. So I went traveling in order to get my mind off the tragedy for a while. So I would um, just, oh, I'm sorry, just one second. I think we need to replace, instead of for a while, we need to replace um, forget about that strategy, okay? So it would be like, I, I went to traveling in order to, in order to take my mind off the, the, the tragedy. And for a while here is optional if you want to omit it or leave it both the same. Take my mind off. Okay. Now um, it's hard to stop focusing on work at weekends. So obviously you don't need to omit all of it. You just need to stop focusing on work and how would you change it on when i think switch off to switch off on my or switch off on my work or you can just say to switch off at weekends okay to switch off because yeah switch off it means like to take a break now the last one to relax and here we would say on wind okay right that's really interesting that's really interesting now let's listen to the recording and double check that our answers were right okay let me play the recording for you Unit 7. Recording 2. 1. OK, run around the field one more time, then you can have a breather. 2. Just go to the party and let your hair down. 3. She's going to take time out from work to finish her PhD dissertation. 4. I went traveling in order to take my mind off the tragedy. Five. It's hard to switch off at weekends. Six. If I've been working a 16-hour shift, I usually go to the bar to unwind. Okay, so um, I believe we got them all right. That's great. All right, did you write the answers? Yes. 
Good job. Good job, everyone. Let me just clear it out here and let me continue. Okay. So, um, so far, so good. Now it's time to listen to three people talking about how they spend, uh, how they spend their free time. And then we will answer the questions. So um, let's listen to those. How many people are we going to listen to? Three. Three people, thank you. Okay. Recording three. Can you hear it? Can you hear it well? Speaker one. Yes. Yes. The way I switch off is by going hiking. We have excellent trails near where I live in Canada where you can walk for a couple of hours. Some days when I'm out there, I literally don't see another person. For me, it's a good way to take time out from my routine. The actual hiking's a hard slog because we're at high altitude and going up hills and across some rocky terrain, but that's fine because it means you're so focused on the walk you can't think about anything else. The only hairy moment was about a year ago when I saw a mountain lion on the trail about 20 yards away. It stopped, looked up at me, had a little sniff, and decided it didn't want me for dinner. Speaker 2 If I want to unwind, I play the piano. I don't think anyone would confuse me with Beethoven. I'm really not very good. But I just find it relaxing. It's like doodling or something. You just let your fingers wander and go with the flow. I play all kinds of music. Even some of my own compositions, which, as I say, are nothing special. My friends say my stuff sounds like elevator music, the kind of thing you hear in the elevator of a sleepy hotel. I think they're probably right. Speaker 3 Any team sports do it for me. I can be having the most stressful day, but then I meet up with my friends for a game of football or ultimate frisbee and all my problems melt away, at least temporarily. I think it's that idea of just running around in the open air, getting sweaty. Maybe it's a remnant of childhood or something, when you had nothing to worry about so you just ran around all day. It works for me. Okay. So far, so good. So did you take notes? Uh, what, what do they uh, do to, like, to get away from their day-to-day -day routine? Can you tell me about the first speaker, second Go. speaker, and the third speaker? He goes for a walk in the mountains. He goes hiking, right? Yes. yes. Do you know what's the difference between hiking and a walk? Uh, a walk shouldn't be like in, in mountains, maybe. Or a walk would be just in a park and for a short time. Hiking would be, I believe, going on, on like more distances, okay? Like people can hike and camp at the same time. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So the, the speaker one, he hikes and he, he doesn't see an, another person. <laughs> What's fun about that? Focuses on the wild and doesn't think about anything else, right? Yes. This is for speaker one. Who can tell me about speaker two? Um, she likes to play piano. That's correct. A calming music and her friends said that uh, her, her music stuff like elevator music. Yeah, it's... that's that's correct. That's very correct. And she unwind with the with the flow. Okay. What about speaker three? Playing football. A game. Yes. Okay. He he does team sports. He says. Uh, yes. Yeah. Right. So now, what about the second question? Let's see. How does it help? How does it help them to switch off? It helps you to come back with your energy. So the first one would be, he, he wouldn't see anyone else. The second one, she would unwind with the, um, you know, with like by going and relaxing with the flow of the music. And the third one, he would uh, remember like, you know. Childhood memories, I guess, or something. Yes, childhood memory. Who said that? 
um, entertained. Good. That's that's a good answer. Yes, you would just have some childhood memory remembrance, and yeah, he he would like he would think that there is nothing that he needs to to worry about. Okay, right. So far, so good. Now, it's your it's your uh, turn to to listen again, and then you need to answer these questions about the each one of the speakers. So. Please have a look at the questions and see what you're going to write notes about in the three questions. So, um, in fact, you need to write questions, okay, for these uh, answers. Here you have answers and you need to write questions about. So, for example, here, near where he lives and here you would write, okay, the question for this answer and so on. Are you ready? Ready. Yes. Okay, let's listen again. Unit seven, recording three. Speaker one. The way I switch off is by going hiking. We have excellent trails near where I live in Canada, where you can walk for a couple of hours. Some days, when I'm out there, I literally don't see another person. For me, it's a good way to take time out from my routine. The actual hiking's a hard slog because we're at high altitude and going up hills and across some rocky terrain, but that's fine because it means you're so focused on the walk you can't think about anything else. The only hairy moment was about a year ago when I saw a mountain lion on the trail about 20 yards away. It stopped, looked up at me, had a little sniff, and decided it didn't want me for dinner. Speaker 2. If I want to unwind, I play the piano. I don't think anyone would confuse me with Beethoven. I'm really not very good. But I just find it relaxing. It's like doodling or something. You just let your fingers wander and go with the flow. I play all kinds of music, even some of my own compositions, which, as I say, are nothing special. My friends say my stuff sounds like elevator music, the kind of thing you hear in the elevator of a sleepy hotel. I think they're probably right. Speaker 3. Any team sports do it for me. I can be having the most stressful day, but then I meet up with my friends for a game of football or ultimate frisbee and all my problems melt away, at least temporarily. I think it's that idea of just running around in the open air, getting sweaty. Maybe it's a remnant of childhood or something, when you had nothing to worry about, so you just ran around all day. Oh, it works for me. All right. Now, um, so what the first question would be like? Um, I think, where does he go for hiking? That's correct. That's a correct answer. Where does he go hiking? Okay, what about the second one? If you want, you can do it, Ikram. Um, I think when or what uh, had he, so that last time he went to a mountain. Okay, so a mountain lion, I'd say, um, what did he see on a trail um, a year ago? You would answer a mountain lion, okay? The question about the lion, not the mountain. That's why you don't need where. Thank you. Now, who wants to answer three and four? Me, um, I'll try. Okay, go ahead, Asneem. What does she play? Or we, we can say the piano and uh, the since it's one. a since it's the piano, why don't you say what instrument does she play? And that's it. Okay. And you can say it at the end to unwind or it's just optional. Okay. The fourth one, I think, what does uh, her music sound like? Um, I think her friends were the ones who were saying her music was elevator music. So yes. I'd say 
what do her friends say uh, her, about her about music? her music? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Now, Tartil, it's your turn. Um, okay, for the first one, I guess what kind of sports he plays uh, to switch off, I guess? Or, yeah, that's correct. Or you can say, what does he do to relax? To switch um, off the same like, uh, well, mm, all right, no problem. Okay, go ahead, do the next one, please. Um... I guess what kind of, no, <laughs> I haven't thought of it yet, so. No problem, I can help you with that. It's about his friends, so who does, uh, who does he play with? And yeah, that's, that's All right. So now, now let's have a discussion down there. We have a discussion here to discuss together and then we can take five minutes of break and then we can continue with the grammar. Today we're going to tackle the participle clauses. So um, let's have this discussion. We have like three topics or three questions. Okay, so the first speaker says his hike or his hikes are a hard slog, okay? What do you think this means? What day-to-day -day part of your life can be a hard slog? This is the first question. Let's see the second question. The second speaker says, you're just, you, or you just go with the, with the flaw. What does this mean? What normally flaws? In, in what circumstances um, might you go with the flaw? And the, th the third speaker says, it's a remnant of childhood. Remnant has similar meaning to remains. So what do you think a remnant of childhood means? Okay. So do you wanna start with the first um, discussion? I think with the third one. <laughs> <laughs> so first let's have the, the, the like um the, like you know the idiom. What what's the meaning of a hard slog? I guess it's something you put so much effort doing it. Yes, hard you persistent work. That's the meaning of a hard slog. So what kind of activity do you do to you know to just go and go by that? Like for my personal life, uh, I don't really do that kind of hard <laughs> slog in my life. You will, you will. <laughs> yeah, to still is relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> you will, you will. Sure. College is coming can soon. <laughs> Teacher can we said when we have a final exam, we yeah, already do yeah, hard yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was a hard work. Yeah, maybe yeah. let's say women are like uh, preparing for TOEFL, maybe let's say like you have a hard slog. Yeah, yeah, that's yes. a really, really hard slog. So what I do when I have like really hard tasks to do, honestly, what I do is the following. And I like, I just, uh, this strategy like really worked for me and I've been doing this for years. It's, it's very important that you divide your work because your brain wouldn't function if you was like, if, if your brain was like um, surprised and afraid with the amount of work you need to do. So I'd suggest like, I, I do personally divide work. And when I divide it, I just, um, I, I go by the steps and I finish that work. This happened with me like in like so many cases. And sometimes I play some music in the background, but not any kind of music. I need some classic music next to the coffee. <laughs> so, yeah. What about you guys? I agree with you, teacher, like to divide work to be easier. Yeah, you divide work too. Okay. Others? Um. For me, I actually stress myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> With that, 
<laughs> obviously. But maybe baby steps. You can start thing by thing until you're done with your work. Yeah. Step by yeah, same for me. I start with the hardest part and then end up with finishing everything. Yeah, so you cool. the easiest part by the end. That's yes. Yeah. So what about the meaning of the next idiom? We have it like, um, just go with the flow. I guess it's go with the rhythm. Yeah, I would, I would like to say deep yeah, down. Just to do what other people are doing or to agree with other people that, you know. Yeah, at the same pattern, I mean. So here they're telling you the second speaker says to go with the flow. What does it mean? And what normally flaws? And what circumstances might you go with the flaw? So yeah, in what conditions you would just go with others and just agree? For me, when um, when uh, when I'm with my friends and they like they they agree to go on uh like they agree to go to a place even if i didn't like it i would just agree with them because yeah all of them said yes and they yeah. will go yeah, yeah. Exactly. in that <laughs> condition i will just uh go with the flow even teacher in the school you know when um when some like random students fight over uh, answer or something you just <laughs> Flow with the, with the like the most answer that is fit that fit the question or you know yeah you need to fit in you can't be the one who's you know, yeah yeah okay. especially, yeah especially like when uh, the teacher like decide to put an exam the whole class wanted and for example Sunday and I wanted on Monday that the horrible feeling actually. But yeah, it's if you <laughs> if you said Monday, everyone is gonna hate you. So you would just agree with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Uh, let's see the third one. We have a the third speaker says it's a remnant of childhood, and um, what is the meaning of uh, remnant of childhood? Memories? Giving you flashbacks from your childhood memory, something. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of um, a small memory of you know of you being um, a child. So um, there, the question here for us: What do you think? Um, okay, we I just answered it. Right. So I believe. So far, so good. We're we're just working fine. Now let's take our five minute five minutes of break, and after break, let's continue with a participle closes. Okay. So if you want to pray or you do whatever you want, just uh, feel free to go for five minutes, and then we will continue. All right. Yeah, teacher. Okay. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, like I wanted to do something you told me before that I would have a long time to like um, to, to see the difference between the still and the new voice really today I like have the difference in my mind yeah I yeah I I, I think I got that long a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. yeah it's like been nine months <laughs> yeah just yeah well I can't differentiate now <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. See you after five minutes. Enjoy your break, guys. You too. You too. You too. A break. That's that good. Break. Good. Great. Um, so, today we're going to study something called participle clauses. Have you ever heard of these kind of clauses? Yeah, I think it's similar to gerund, isn't it? Sorry? It's just similar to gerund, like some of them like end with ing, I think, or ed. Yes, that's that's right. 
that good job, uh, Ikram. They are phrases that end, uh, end with ing or ed. And um, well, we use participle clauses to, you know, to, to give the information or to tell the information in, in a more economical way. So we use them forming present participles, like for example, going, reading, feeling, walking, and sometimes past participle as well, like gone, read, seen, walk, etc. Or even sometimes we use perfect participles as well, like having done, having gone, having read, having seen, etc. So before we go to the language bank today, I want you to have a look here. And we have here a, a text. So let's read about someone who found true freedom by learning a new skill. And then we would, we would just answer the question of what did she learn and how did she do it? All right, so um, let's see. Here we have an underlined, a, okay, great. But it's just two of them are underlined. So um, who wants to read for us? I can. Go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Okay. It's fine. Uh, feeling dated from life at a disc and armed with nothing but a love of uh, Argentinian culture, I decided to learn the tango. Having listened to the music as a child, I already knew uh, the rhythms, so I felt excited walking into my first tango class. However, the tango was harder than it looked, and after the first class, my feet were sore and my knees ached. Not one, not one thing wanting, okay, not wanting to give up, I decided to take matter, matters uh, into my own hands and feet. Using uh, a CD, led to me by a friend I practiced at home and after a while uh, I improved encouraged by my teacher I went to a cafe where you could hear the music and eventually having a stri having struggled with it for months I got the hang of it people looking for something a bit different always love the tango when you are doing it you feel completely free the word disappears it's just you, your partner, and the music. Thank you. So the question here is, what did she learn and how did she do it? She learned the tango dance. Yes, and how did she do it? She went to a class and she practiced alone. Thank you, that's it. By taking classes and practicing at home. Now, I want to to try, to try to see what do you know. I wanted to underline the present and the past participles in the text. Can you do this for me? Yes, sure. So here you have an example like in feeling. I'm just trying to change the color. It's highlight, so it's gonna be in yellow. So um, like here an example in feeling. Another example here is in armed. All right. Please underline the other uh, participles for me, present and past. No, I'm done teaching. Good. What about you others? I'm done yet. Okay. Okay, let's do it together. So we have first here feeling and then uh, armed. Okay. Da, 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 da. Where is the next one? Having listened. Having. Having listened. This is the perfect participle. 
Okay. It's okay. I already read them. Where, where okay. is the next one then? Walking. Uh, excited. Walking. I felt excited. Walking. No, it's not, I think. It's not a participle. However, the tango was harder than it looks after a while class, and etc. Not one thing. one thing. This is it. Not one thing. Okay. Yeah. I decided to take matters into my own hands and my feet using a CD. Where's the parts of using? Thank you. Yeah, encouraged by. Uh, encouraged by, okay, this is, is a participle as well. Okay. And have struggled. Having yeah. struggled, this is another one, thank you. The last one, I think. The last one, where's the last one? Is this the last one, having struggled? Yeah, I think. Okay, let me just double check. Have, okay, people looking. This is a participle. You really need to differentiate. This is the entire lesson. It's not just to know what are the participles. You already know them. It's what, what really matters is to differentiate between participles and the verbs. Because look, it, would ha it, it wouldn't happen to, if, if you have a verb after people and you just say looking. Looking here is a participle. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have it as a verb, you would say people are looking, not people looking. Okay, so now it's time to I look look at the rules first, and then we're gonna go to the language bank. Okay, let me just have a look here. So we need to match sentences one to four. Okay, with rules A to D. Let's see. Uh, we will do it together. Let's see the rules we have. First, they're telling us participle clauses can first replace relative clauses. B, have an active meaning when they begin with the present participle. C, have a passive meaning when they begin with a past participle. This is very important, guys, to remember. You have a, an active meaning with the present participle. And who can give me an example with the present participle? Like going, reading, walking. Running, yeah. Yes. And what about the past participle? He played left. Yes, yes, the ED, left, gone. Describe action happening around time or one immediately after another. Okay, now. Let's match them with the sentences. Sentence one. Encouraged by my teacher, comma, I went to a cafe where you could hear the music. So what kind of- I could see. see. Yes, this is a passive meaning. With, it starts with a past participle and see. Two, not wanting to give up, Comma, I decided to take matters into my own hands. B, I guess. Yes, this is a present participle, present participle, or yeah, present participle, yeah, exactly. So this is B. All right, what about C? A CD lent to me or that was lent to me by a friend. A, maybe A. Yes, yeah. this is replacing a relative clause. Thank you. A. Um, I felt excited walking into my first tango day class. D. And that's D. We use it to Describe action happening around the same time or immediately after another. Okay. Right, so now, 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 now. 
let's have a look there. And they're telling us read rules ETF, find an example in the text. We will just read the rules and then go to the language bank. So they're telling us we have having plus past participle. This is what we call past participle. Uh, you can use it to give background information or show the case of a second action. Okay, I can give you an example. For example, having listened to the music as a child, where can I find it? I'm sure that it was around here. Having yeah. listened, I'm sure that. Yeah. In the third line. Okay, here, yes. Having listened to music as a child, I learned the rhythms. Okay, now what about the, the last rule we have here? They're telling you the past participle can be used as an adjective to add an extra information. So you can look here. In the second one, armed and, uh, for example, feeling um, gathered from live at desk and armed with nothing but a love of Argentinian culture. Armed here, we used it as an adjective. And it's, of course, what a it's past participle. All right, now let's go to page 140, please. And let me check what do we have after. Yeah, we have just one exercise and speaking. I feel we were, yeah, we're good with the time. Now let's go to page 140, please. And we can see past participle or participle closes. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, let's see what the book is telling us. I believe it's, it would tell you exactly what I told you. Participle clauses are used to make our writing or speaking more economical. Exactly what I told you. Efficient and sometimes even more elegant. Okay, so they can also be used or, or like be used to add information about reason conf or condition or or and a result. So we use them to, to and this is this is why we use them. Here is the reason. Of course, not using them would it be uh, wouldn't be wrong, but we use them, you would sound more, you know, elegant, you would sound more practical. So we have types of them, the past one, past participle. Like for example, loved by everyone, exhausted from her efforts. Come on, you, you. This is this comma is very important. This means that you had that phrase, that introductory phrase, and then you're continuing your own sentence. And usually, with these kind of phrases, phrases connected to as as an, an introductory phrase or close, you have the rest of the sentence followed up with a depend, sorry, independent close. An independent close is a close that can stand on its own. So look here, you can find it. You can find this is a dependent and this is an independent. So loved by and by everyone or by, yeah, by everyone. What, what would it mean on its own? It wouldn't give you a full meaning, but here, Don was a wonderful character. If you deleted this, you would still have Don was a wonderful character as a full sentence. So yes, this is what we call a complex sentence, but our lesson here isn't to focus on complex or compound. I, I just love to remind you, we just have um, this dependent close or here it's a participle close because it's, it's, um, um, it's headed by a participle here. It's a past participle. Why do we use them? We use them for having a passive meaning, okay? And we use them to give extra information. So um, sometimes they work as adjectives when they are describing a noun. And this is an important thing to discuss. When they are describing a noun, we use them to, you know, like as adjectives. 
here you can see here exhausted from her efforts so here exhausted from her efforts come up she struggles or she struggled on so exhausted here it's describing she which is a pronoun like a noun right now we have the other type which is the present uh, participle present participle clauses they have an active meaning and we use them with the ing form for example let's see an example here the woman who is smiling the woman smiling this is how it would be in the uh, in the participle the first one is just um, here this is a the woman who is smiling in the photo is my grandma this is a relative close this is not a um, a participle look at the participle the woman smiling in my photos is my grandma i smiled I, 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 sorry, I smelled the bread that was burning or I smelled the burning bread. Can you see the difference? So um, they're telling you here as reduced relative closes, here the present participle serves the same purpose as an adjective. So yeah, exactly like what they told you. Look here, burning bread. It serves as an adjective when it's describing noun. And we use the present participle to describe active actions while we use the past one to describe passive ones. And we use them as, we can use them as the adjectives when they are describing nouns. Okay, so here, right. So, okay. We have here something just to discuss uh, the adverbial uh, closes. So we use them as and like we use them as adverbs, not adjectives here. This is uh, yeah, this is good. Let's have a look at them and see examples. They're telling you they express or for we use them to expressing manner, conditions, cause, and result. Okay, this is especially common in informal or literary texts to make the negative. To make the negative use not before the present participle. Let's see an example to understand. Moving silently, comma, the lion follows its prey. This is very good. This is a very good structure, and they're very right. They, they use it in literature. So here, moving silently, it would describe what? It would describe the act, like the, the move of or the action of moving of the lion, okay? So once it's describing the verb, it would be an adverb, right? And here, this is what we call adverbial closes. Why? Because they are describing the action, the verb, right? Not the noun. Lying face down in the sand, it looked like some strange sea beast. So again here, lying face down in the sand, it would describe his action uh, in, in putting his face down in the sand. And this is describing, you know, his action and how he looked, the way that he looked. So again, you're describing a, a you know, a verb, not a noun. Not being qualified, not being qualified, she couldn't work there. So again, action of working describing it with not being qualified there was a fire resulting in serious damage so again all of them are called adverbial closes i i'm sure that you know the structure but you don't know the name of the grammar rule and that's perfectly fine now the last thing to study here is having plus past participle and this is a very common structure we use it a lot having one having uh, eaten having etc why do we use this why do we use this um, you know structure we use it to show the cause of a second action so let's see for example 
having won every competition, comma, he decided to retire. Yes, you would have like two actions and you would put the first one with having, having decided to travel abroad, comma, he applied for universities in other countries, you see? Okay. And also to show a sequence of actions, this is similar to what I told you. Having made breakfast, comma, she sat down and read the newspaper. So we use it to, to, to show the cause of a second action here. And we use it to show you or to tell about a sequence of actions. Honestly, the example I used would fit here, the second one. The first one, it would like the, the first phrase would show action, would show the cause of the action that was, um, you know, if you think about it, it was caused by the first one. So having won every competition, because he won every competition, he decided to retire. Oh no, he decided to retire because he was, or he won every competition he had, you see? Did you understand, guys? Yes. Do you do you have any questions here? No. Okay. It's a bit confusing to me, but it's fine. It's a bit I, confusing. I, I, it is. Which one is bit, is a bit confusing? Uh, the same. <laughs> the whole thing. I I kind. Of have have problems with the participle uh, tense, you know. Okay, okay, that's it. So it's okay. We can have just some examples, and we will practice together down there. So let's go to the exercise. So we will practice using this one. More examples would help you to have less confusion. So now we have here parts of sentences or sentence pairs. Uh, that we need to like complete using you know the same verb as one as you know present participle and once in past participle. Go ahead, please. You have five sentence pairs, and maybe if we finish this and it was like time for us, we can stop there. But if we had enough time, we can go and answer another exercise from, you know, from the unit. So go ahead. Um, teacher, number four B, they said all, oh, um, what does that word mean? Four uh, B. Okay, four B, all participant. Yes. A badge. No, uh, all the participants, I guess. What okay. does it Participants? Yes. People who are participating in something, <laughs> you know, like uh, oh. when you participate in something, you are a participant. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> what does it mean? What's the meaning of to participate? 
to take yes. a, to take a turn in something, okay? Oh, okay. So for example, you have a competition and you have participants, people who are participating, mushtarikin. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's do it together, guys. Okay. okay. Let's see. So, um, right, sentence one. So you have past and present participles. Who wants to do number three, A and B? No one? I can, I will try. All right, go ahead. I said, licked as much uh, noise as she could. Lola attract the attention of the whiskers. What's the verb that you used? I said, looked. Looked? Yeah, looked, yeah, with ED. I didn't hear you. Sorry, what is that verb? Looked, yeah. Looked, looked as much noise as she could. Not to attract attention, but you make a, you make noise to attract attention of others, right? Yeah. So I would also say okay. making as much noise as she could, so she can attract or Lola attract the attention of the rescue uh, rescuers, people who are rescuing other people. She was, uh, she was in trouble. She was drowning or something. Yeah, but teacher shouldn't we use uh, mate because he said attract. But she was making the action. The action should be active. She's, you know. Yeah, but he said in the question like ones as a present participle and ones as a past participle. Yeah, so... we say made in China. <laughs> oh, made in okay. China. This new gadget will be cheap and effective. I got it, yeah, yeah, thank you. But look, when you think of it, um, main, like when you look here, making noise, she was doing an action. The meaning of the action is, uh, you know, not passive. She was really doing the action to attract the attention. Okay, so who wants to do number two? I can. Go ahead, please. Uh, though he had six months to live, he shocked everyone by living another 20 years. Uh, thinking, thinking his staff, he uh, was visiting a son, uh, John's disappeared with all the company's money. Telling, right? Telling his staff he was visiting a client. John's dis disappeared with all the company's money. <laughs> No, not nice, not nice, man. Okay. Um, Tati, you, you can do number three. Okay. Um, uh, paying for her tickets, she suddenly realized she had never been to theater before. That's correct. 
be um, paid by the hour, the employees rarely, rarely work at the weekend. Okay, thanks. Right, now it's my turn. Mm, many of the clothes worn by famous people are kept in the museum. And all participants uh, wearing a badge will receive a free meal. Who wants to do the last one? I'm try to do I can. Mm, okay, come you read today, so I can ask Tasneem to do it, please. Okay. In my opinion, it's one of the best books ever read. Uh, reading on uh, his blog today, Mike Dives says the economic crisis is over. Uh, I would say, in my opinion, this is one of the best books uh, ever written. Okay. And I haven't thought about this verb. <laughs> well, ever read. Uh, it's okay as well. It's correct. But I think the meaning here would be more suitable with written. Yeah, yeah. The phrase that is very best common. Best. You said like best written books, you know. Okay. And writing on his blog today. So reading on his blog wouldn't suit as well, but yeah, writing. Okay. Right. So. Did you take the answers? Yes. All right, so far, so good. I believe we finished here. Let's go back in our book and see if we can just like, maybe we can do it fast and finish up the unit. Yes, so here we have yeah, make one sentence from two. Use participles and the words in brackets. Omit some words. So, for example, an, ex uh, an expert have proven, okay, jogging is a stress buster and it's a great exercise. So, proven by ex experts. To be a stress bust, uh, a stress buster, jogging is a good or a great exercise. You know what? I will give you the rest of them as homework, and I will give you the answers next lesson. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. So, do you have any questions for today? No, thank. You. No, thank you. You're most welcome. So, I will see you next week. Until then. Take care. And yeah, you too. see you next week. See you, teacher. Bye. 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 Bye.